Hello. Sorry, we're, we're going to make do with this mic, so. It's fine. I'm, I'm loud, and this is a small room, so it all works out. Yes. Um, so I'm Catherine Druckmann. I am with Intel. I am an open source security evangelist, and this is my favorite fellow evangelist. I am Ezekiel Lanza. I am an open source AI evangelist, and we are both working for Open at Intel, the open source of the open part of Intel. So, why are we here today? Why are we here, Easy? Let, uh, tell it. So, the way we see it, innovation in the field of generative AI is moving incredibly rapidly, and everyone from large enterprises all the way down to individuals is anxious to jump in and start building applications, right? Um, either building new applications or integrating AI functionality into existing applications. Maybe they're, they've got a cool new startup. Maybe they have a mandate from on high that they need to make a, develop a solution that fits their specific needs. Uh, the, the thing that happens, though, when you get so excited about a new technology um, is that with all of this great innovation comes hurdles, right? Uh, today, we're going to go over some of the challenges of developing generative AI applications, and then we're going to talk about the problems that arise from that and the community solutions that uh, Intel and others are working together to provide. So, Easy, what do you think is contributing to this struggle? I think that what is most contributing to this struggle is that we are trying to, to build a company, right? So we don't have some ways like are not standardized, mm -hmm. right? So we try to, we are all the time trying to reinvent the wheel on things like we have Langchain, we have multiple frameworks that we are using and we are struggling on that, right? And since, since I mentioned struggling, so what do you think that is struggling exactly for this mess? So, so I, I like to, <laughs> I like to use Legos <laughs> as a, as a, as a visual metaphor. Um, the problem, I think, when we are developing in silos is that things don't necessarily fit together. So what we, we, we strive for is interoperability. It saves us a, a tremendous amount of time. Um, and I think we're, we're all open source people here. That's why we're all here together uh, this week in Vienna. Um, so this is really the open source way. It's to avoid developing in these silos and to work toward the ability to work together. Um, so easy, it, like generative it AI development uh, isn't exactly new, per se, okay. so... It's, I mean, we can say that it's pretty new. I mean, in terms of technology, it's not so new. Um, that's a cool slide, for instance. Um, I, I will say that it started in 2017 with the transformers and all this big architecture. So but from that, we've seen a, like, an, a, like an explosion of models, frameworks, we can, we can talk about all the GPT things, all the, I mean, hugging face, stability, llama index, uh, multiple things that move us when, when, where we are today, right? And if we are a company or if we are an enterprise and you would like to deploy that, the same thing, thing, thing as I mentioned, you don't have too many options to choose on that. I can say that if it was an explosion in 2017, it's fine, but actually, and even if I don't love to say that, it started with ChatGPT, right? Because it's when most people started to know about LLMs, about GPT, about chatbots, and so on. So we can say that from 2022 to now, which is it's just two years, and the amount of frameworks that have been created, it's crazy. It's, it's insane. So we can't imagine that we have some problems and we have to deal we're, with we're moving something. So, we're moving very fast we're moving and we're very, very excited fast. about it right yeah. all of us collectively yeah so and so, what what happens when we get excited and push these technology boundaries easy we have more legos right basically yeah we have yeah. a pile of legos <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically what we have is it, 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 we think that the legos are great to visualize that uh, because it's we have too many options. And every time that you have to pick an LLM or how to use it, we need to pick from a pile of Legos and we need to find the best one for us. And when we're pioneers, I think, in a new technology, we don't always have the benefit of the wisdom of those that came before us. Uh. No. Because yeah. we have too many options, we can probably finish on something <laughs> like that. Don't, don't be scared. I mean, it's, 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 it's like a monster, but this is something that we create 
same thing. When we are in an enterprise in a company and we are deploying something and we don't have the standards or we don't have a standardized way to do it, we end up with something like, not something like that probably, because let's visualize that. This is something that works, right? So I'm not saying that it doesn't work, that it's a mess. But let's suppose that you are in a company and you would like to change the beautiful green eyes. So that could be very complicated to find the same eyes, to find the same thing, the same objects and everything. Yeah. So we don't want to build no. nothing on top of and that. Had we maybe started with something a little more orderly, we might not have created this monster, yeah. right? We've all been there, it works. It was probably even fun to build, uh, but maybe it has a mind of its own, right? So we're here to talk a little bit about uh, some good news, right? The good news is that as we do in the open source community, we're coming together to find solutions to this, to taming our, taming our monster a bit. And, and we're here to introduce a, a vendor neutral uh, interoperable platform that helps tame a bit of that. Um, yeah. Izzy, tell us a little bit about yeah, it's the called, open platform for enterprise AI. It's called open platform for enterprise AI. The way as we, we say it, it's OPA. We had a conversation about OPA, 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 but it's OPA, how most people, how we agree to call it, which is basically a, a framework that allows you to deploy the, that helps you on the deployment of end-to-end -end applications. When you're working with Gen AI, it's not just one part. You, have, you know, you have multiple parts, multiple moving parts on your project. So this project helps on this deployment, treating each of those particular parts as a building block. This is why we have Legos and this is why we love that. There are two main benefits as an enterprise. Is it, the first one is you can, it eases how you deploy it because you have a compose file or have just one file when you have everything to deploy it and it avoids vendor locking. Yeah, and right. speaking of vendor locking. Speaking avoiding, of vendor locking. Avoiding <laughs> vendor locking. Um, yeah, so we're from Intel, but this is not just an Intel effort, right? Uh, this was, was created by Intel, donated to the Linux Foundation, and we have a lot of fellow travelers contributing uh, to the effort, uh, you know, to uh, promote best practices. And it's also, and AMD is also there. AMD I know, AMD even, AMD, like, so even, even AMD. So, okay, easy. Before we get into our reference ac architecture and build our chat app, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what RAG means in the context of AI development? Yes, uh, I think that to do that, uh, I would need to do some, some kind of prey roll. Mm. Yes. Uh, I think. Sorry, so. This is what the cat ears are for. <laughs> <laughs> Let's suppose I am the person and you are the cat now. You are the LLM. The LLM. You are the model, the smart model. And I would like to ask you if you know who is my mom, like a very personal question. I, I don't know. I don't know your mom. I am. You should. You should I don't know anything about your mom. I'm so sorry. I can tell you all about a famous person's mom, but I don't know your mom. So you are saying I'm not famous? Not yet. Okay. Okay. So you told me you're smart. So what I, happened? I, I am smart, but unfortunately, I am a pre-trained model. I only have gener general knowledge, and you should have given me context. Um. So that's my fault. No. That is, it is, in fact, okay. your fault, easy. Yeah. Okay, so what happens is, as we know, right, the LLMs, they are trained on a huge amount of data, so we need to find a way to provide context. So what would happen if now I would change my, the way to ask to her, right? Like, now, cut to yours. Yeah. What do we have? And I mean, answer that how, question. How do, how do we how do we give it more context? How do you give me more context? I will tell you. I will give you in my words, right? So I will say, answer to this question. My mom was born in the US and she's 60. She's, she has Italian roots. Yeah. Her favorite is food is pizza. I'm also a big fan of pizza, but she lo loves pizza. So who is my mom? Oh. Well, your mother, Easy, is a lovely woman. She's getting older in years, I suppose. Okay. Um, okay. She probably makes some really delicious food because of her Italian roots. It's true. It's true. It's true. Okay. So what we gave here in this example is that, of course, if you ask to ChatGPT, ChatGPT loves to talk, right? When you ask for something, the answer is not just to one line. It's a bunch of lines. So what we are doing here is we are providing instructions to the model. I'm providing the context, I mean, from my prompt. 
and I'm providing the question. So I basically changed the prompt and the LLM was a, a smart enough, as you were, to give an answer based on that context. So this was what, what is called RAG, which is basically, I retrieve, and the, what RAG stands for, it's retrieval, because I have the information. In that case, I have it in my mind. In a real use case, we don't have all the information in our minds. We have a knowledge base. But in that case, I have it in my brain, so I know who my man is. So I retrieve that information from my brain. I augment it, like the prompt. I had a new prompt. Click, click. Oh, yes, sorry. I have a new prompt. <laughs> they, 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 and this is why the augmented part, because I'm, I'm augmenting the prompt, I'm augmenting the knowledge, instructing. And the LLM is generating the answer based on that. So that was a very basic explanation of what right. RAG is. Yeah, so the main goal, obviously, is to, get, to provide a prompt with enough information to answer the question that you need and suits your own use case. So how does it actually work, though? Well, that can be a bit complicated. It's not so simple as uh, having information in my mind, right? So we, what, what actually happened, and, and now is when we start to talk about blogs or part is that I had my question right here with my mom that goes to the an embedding model which is converting my question to a vector but we can think that is a, is a two-step process the first step is the before right so before I go and ask to the model I need to have the data or the information stored in my knowledge base so who is my mom and all the information let's suppose I don't have my brain and I have all the things on the knowledge base so that information is stored somehow in the knowledge base. And once I'm doing that question, I'm making that question, something called the retriever is comparing my question with, all, with the entire knowledge base to extract the most similar parts. For instance, the, knowledge, the retriever will extract that my mom was born in the US, she's six, and so on. And with that, the application will create a new prompt and will feed the LLM with that prompt to have that information. So we can imagine that can be complicated. That can we will start to be complicated. Oh, uh, and, and also the re-ranking that I didn't mention, yeah. uh, mention, but it's when you are retrieving, for instance, you have the top five or top 10 documents and you need to do like an extra filter to have the most relevant. So that's more like a checking part when you do a fine tuning of what you already have. And this is what the re-ranking does. And you prepare a new, a new context, a new prompt. So, we can imagine that there are some challenges here. The, the, the challenges can be, and just to mention a few, I mean, we can talk for 30 minutes yeah, about we this. We can talk the rest but of the time just about these challenges. Data, with the data, we need to know how to index the data. We need to know which uh, vector database we are going to be using. Probably we, we were using Redis, but something happened and we would like to change to another database like Milvos. So that's one of the challenges we have with data, how to prepare the data. Are we working with text, with images, with what, what, whatever? That's one challenge. The LLM is how to select the right LLM for your application. Not only on how you do it, it works, but also with framework, which hardware, I mean, how it works. And the most important part is the deployment, right? So you have everything, but you need to actually deploy it. How you deploy it, how you look for hardware efficiency, which method you will be using for the retrieval. So we can imagine that it's being more and more complicated. So, so we can now, right, if we start from, again, a more orderly place, uh, we can now have this beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, solid building. Uh, this is the aim of OPA reference architecture, right? All of those Legos we mentioned before, uh, ideally, if used correctly, will give us a solid base and in theory would be uh, easily plug and play too. So I think it's time for a demo. Let's show, oh, them. Yeah, Let's yeah, show them how sure, it actually works. Yeah. Well, that's pretty, that will be short. So we, let's suppose, this is basically how, how RAG works in a real, yeah, oh, sorry. Right. And it's a true stop right Here we go. Nice. This is how we see, for instance, this is what we will be building when we are creating our application. So let's suppose we would like to, to, to ask him to talk, tell me what is OPA. Same thing as I talk with my mom, we would like to talk, 
to us to the model who is OPA. Of course, the model, OPA is pretty new, right? so it was launched four months ago uh, as part of the Linux Foundation. So if you ask that to a pre-trained model that was pre-trained in 2022, it doesn't have the context. Right? So we need to find a way to provide the context. And the way to provide the context is we can go to the, our site and we can feed the RAG application with that URL. And that URL is the OPA URL, that's all the site. So what's going on underneath is, is it's scrapping that site and it's converting that to text and it's sending that to the vector database. Now we are able to ask, like, tell me, tell me about OPA. And the question that we will get is OPA is an open source, is an open platform for enterprise and so on and so on and so on. And I can ask more questions, like where are the main, the main goals or the main values of OPA? And the model will also know because it has this context extracted from the data, from the, from the URL, right? So this is what, how a RAG application works. We can go into the details of the code later. But this is basically, when you are working with some of these, this is what we will be building, exactly. So, fine, yeah. Okay. So, so we're now, we're gonna go through each component a little more. So um, let's think about, can we, for example, see how the embeddings microservice works? I will, I will hand it over yeah. to you easy. I mean, I could explain it, but you do such a good Same job. thing as we, as we did with the blocks. Right, so this is just one example. We can, we can explain each particular block, but once, for instance, you would like to see how the microservices work or how the embeddings microservice work, is that you have, for instance, a container that is either provided by a company, by a partner, or by the community. It's something that we are open to receive. The project is open to receive, of course, contribution. So this is one kind of project, uh, of container. And you need to set up some environments that it's the way that you, I, I, I don't know, you set up the launching key, the, t, the embedding endpoint, and you set up multiple endpoints when you are configuring, when the compose file is configuring this particular microservice. But what we have at the end, once it's running, let's suppose that we have our port, we, we, we can do a core just to see how it works, if it's working. So we will do a core to that embedding microservice and what we'll have is, we have the input, which is who is my mom. Basically what this microservices is doing is converting the text to vectors or to numbers or to numeric representations. So here is what you have. You have who is my mom and this is the vector numerical representation of this particular uh, phrase. Okay. So moving along. Uh, so this is a, a, a larger picture, right? It's a, we're, we're talking about um, a collection of microservices. Uh, which can communicate with each other, obviously. Um, but what's missing here? It's fine, but what happens when you're... You, you need to actually make a, a thing that you can use, yeah, that humans fine. can actually it's fine, use. It's fine, it's great, but I mean, you need some parts, right? So you need like an UI, you need something like that. And this is what we, if we go here, one more. We have, we love those animations. We spend months doing that animation. <laughs> but... Uh, of course, you have the UI, you have the initial UI, and you have the mega service, which is, this is more, if we can go in technical details, of course, but it's, you cannot expose all the services to the UI, so you need to find something in the middle that is the mega service that is, acts like a kind of gateway between all the mega services, and all the microservices, and the UI. And it also configures how the communication between all of them works, but that's basically another extra service. Uh, there's nothing more additional, that's just this service, and because we can be very technical if we start talking about that, but just we want to. It's a single to point of contact. Exactly. Simplification, lovely. Oh, we've got more. Oh, the, the other part of the code. Now let's go just. Yes, this initial part. So what? What what we will have is like a quick explanation of the compose file, and how you are set up and how you configure everything, all the features, all the features. Uh, so suppose you have to set up the environment variables, like which model you'll we'll be using, and this is what we talked about the vendor locking to avoid that. So you can, you can say whichever the model you would like to use, 
you see the LLM model ID there. Here we are using Intel, the Intel LLM, but you can use any other model. Uh, you can use any other model for the embedding. You can use any other vector database. You can change the configuration of your compose file. You can put any other. And this is how you actually run it, right? So the only thing, and this is the benefit, is a compose file. So the compose file, once you run it, you will see that all the microservices started. The same thing as we, as we mentioned before, embedding, retriever, LLM, the model, uh, the re-ranking and all of that. If we can check to each particular container if they are working, uh, for instance, and we can check. And let's suppose that we would like to dive into one particular LLM or one particular container. So we can see the logs, for instance, and we can verify that this container is working and it's exposing the service on the 900, 9000. So there are some ways that you can check if all the microservices are working. And the, 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 the last part is, this is the UI, where the UI is exposed. And it's the same thing as, just one more, I think there you go. The same thing as, as I showed before on how you code and how you get the embeddings. This is the same thing. And we can do everything to test each particular microservices. Here we are testing the embeddings. Here we are testing the, the, the retriever. And we can do the testing to each particular microservices to see, to see if, it's, if it's working. So that's the main goal of this demo. I mean, we, we didn't want to go too deep on that. I just wanted to show that, hey, you have multiple containers and this is how you test them. Yes. Right. And please feel free to come by the open.intel booth if you have any more questions or want a more extensive uh, answer. Yeah. And we have here. Yeah. Ah, here we go. Here. Yes. Ooh. Okay. Oh, here we go. Yes. This will take you directly to the chat Q&A demo specifically. I'll leave that up for a second. But there are many other demos in the uh, OPA repo, right? Visual Q&A, uh, there's a translator or some code gen, but this will specifically take you to the one we just demoed. Give you a sec, make sure everybody got it. Okay. Okay. So, so, so what did we learn? What did we learn from Easy just now? <laughs> so what is the good? The good is, right, RAG is a great solution for uh, having context, contextual answers, right? You need to build a customer service app, for example, that knows all of your proprietary information. You can't rely on just right, a large language model with general information. So hopefully, by using a more structured approach, you can get started and shorten the path a bit from concept to at least some sort of minimal, minimum viable product. But obviously there are challenges, right? Um, different types of data, uh, you know, large amounts of data. So this is, this is all, um, you know, what we're, again, working together to, to solve. And there's a lot more you can build. As I mentioned, there are, if you go to the OPA repo, you can find uh, numerous demos and it really the only limitation is your imagination at this point we encourage um, we encourage contributions if it's not yet there please work with us to create it I'll let I'll let easy talk a little bit more about the, the OPA roadmap. About the roadmap yes it's since it's a new project of course uh, it started four months ago as I mentioned uh, the project has a roadmap to start adding multiple features because one of the goals as we mentioned is Gen, most common Gen AI applications. For enterprises, they would like to use Gen AI, they don't know how, but they want to use the most common applications. So in that case, we are providing, uh, the community is providing RAG, and we are also preparing like fine tuning, multimodality, AI agents, and now we are all talking about AI agents. So the idea is to have by the end of 2024, like an AI agent reference architecture, the same thing as you could see with the, with the RAG. Vertical use case, I mean, we have some multiple working groups within the project mm -hmm. that are working with multiple verticals, focusing on industry challenges. What will be great for this project is to have multiple industries participating and providing their own use case on, this is how you do run on uh, RAG on finance, healthcare, something like that. 
Yeah. I also want to mention that we're, we're uh, addressing security, of course, security. as you should yeah. early on. And please talk to me later if you're interested in joining that effort. Yeah, please. Oh, here's like an this. example. It's yeah. a good example of security. You can go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, here's an example of a recent contribution. Uh, this is specifically a contributed uh, set of guardrails, right? So obviously we are concerned with um, with uh, the trustworthiness and various various uh, aspects of generative AI for which you might want to implement guardrails. So, so a member of the community has has uh, come forward and, and contributed that. So we'd love to see more of this. We would lo love to see more options for guardrails uh, in implementing them. Um, again, so here's the link to, to OPA. Uh, we would love, again, more participants we would love people to join us in this sort of gender, uh, gender neutral uh, playing field to ensure um, you know, that we don't, we don't get locked into a certain path and that we are, are doing things correctly. So um, again, please join a working group. Uh, we would love to see more use cases. We would love to see members of the community create more issues, uh, provide feedback, uh, and again, spread the word of all of this kind of work in your own communities and events. Um, this slides. will take you to a page where yeah. we will post the slides from this talk. Uh, we have not done that yet, but once they are complete and exported, they will be there. And then we will continue to add other resources as we find them. And you know, pull requests are always welcome, right? This is a living and breathing document. If there's some yeah. a, a piece of reference material that you would like to see us add, or you would like to, uh, you know, raise our raise our attention, uh, please please feel free to do that. Give you a minute to scan it. And then here, here's who we are. Here's where you can find us. Again, we are we are always um, anxious to meet people to travel with us on this journey of openness. And here's where you can find us. And we have some cool things for people who make questions. Yes, we will so, open it up to any questions. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay, gentleman in the back. Um, are you doing projection matrix for the embedding? How do you store different embeddings for different models? Do you get any dependency between the underlying LND and then the embedding? The embedding model, yes. Actually, how it is now is you can choose which, which embedding are you using to which vector database. Uh, and then, I mean, the, 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 the benchmarking part, it's not built for yet for the embeddings and how to check the quality of the embeddings and everything. But of course, it's something that can be upstream. Uh, we have something similar, the project has something similar for uh, benchmarking how the LLM is working, right? So what is the latency, how it's performing and so on. But in terms of the quality of the embeddings, uh, it's not yet, but, but I assume that it will be soon, even either for the company or for any company or for the community also. So people who provide them. We can give him Oh, would you like a t-shirt? Or perhaps or a notebook? Thank you for asking a question. It's the t-shirt. It is, it ah, is, but it we is. also have. Can I interest you in a notebook? <laughs> any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> That's great, yes. Yep. Yeah, the standard, the standard is not to replace Langchain or to replace Lang Lama Index. The standard, which is not a standard, it's like a recipe on how they communicate each other. But the blog, for instance, if you go to the repo, we can see that there are some, the embeddings, for instance, they are using the, the embedding microservice. You have the Langchain version and the Lama Index version, and they all communicate each other. So since it's a container or a microservice, uh, it's not attached to any particular lang chain or it's more how they communicate yep you can use the microservices that runs on lang chain for instance uh, same for the llms and everything but how they communicate each other they, this is what how the standard or the the recipe explains how they communicate like with the api calls and everything but it's totally open exactly exactly i mean the 
when you are building the RAG application, for instance, of course, if you have your own application and you just want to use one part of the OPA, yeah, it's the microservices that you can use. No. You can you can create build something on top, but what OPA does is the every every each container, for instance, a microservice. When you are configuring the block, they have a the OPA API, which is how you register, for instance, this container to the mega service and so on. The part of the configuration is what the mega service controls, which is basically how you use the entire flow. But you can build your own flow, or you can build something on top of that flow. It's some, it's some, actually, it's, it's embedded in the container. So it, if launching advances and they create, like I would say, like a standard, you can have like a new retriever or new part, which is using that part of launching, which basically. Yeah, so no, it's, I, it's, it's yeah. one particular part. Yeah, I suppose what I mean. Yeah, uh, how you use it actually is with the, OP, with the API that OPU provides. Okay. And on top of that, you can build whatever you want. Thank you. Can you have me. <laughs> Not yet. No. No. It's. I mean, it's the example. It's just the example with some benchmarking. There are some parts. Um, one of the blocks that is not blocks. One of the parts of the GitHub is Gen AI evaluations. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know if it's exactly what you're meaning. But that is like reference architecture as a way to use it to evaluate how the architecture works. I don't know if it's exactly that thing that you mentioned, um, but it's something like that. Yeah. Thank you. I think it is in the roadmap. Uh, yes, I don't know if it's for 2025, but is it, it is on the roadmap. Yeah. Our roadmap. It doesn't mean that it's the OPA roadmap, like so people can contribute yeah. and it's... Each one comes with their own exactly. stack. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. A question, yes. That's a great question. Uh, that's actually, as you, as you mentioned, is is one step before. Like, so as you said at the beginning, is the data prep, but the data prep is you have to upload your file. Okay. How you create the files, how you go to your database to uh, extract those files, uh, that's not part. Yeah, I don't think that will be part really, because it's more like a, an extra layer. Oh, yeah. That's a good customization on top of the architecture of the as it exists. Yep. Any questions? Any more questions? All right. Who did I miss? I missed somebody. Please see me after class. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> That's it. Well, thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank thank you, you for coming and listening to our cat ear shenanigans. Go to our booth. <laughs>